commercial jet pilots could soon be relying on a satellite positioning system developed by the military. As Craig Heaps reports, student researchers have figured out how the technology can help jets land in bad weather. A graduate research project may revolutionize the aviation industry. Students at Stanford University have found a simple, inexpensive way to tap into the U.S. military's Global Positioning System, or GPS, and feed the information instantaneously to a plane's existing autopilot. The GPS is a series of 24 satellites whose signals allow anyone with a receiver to determine his or her position anywhere in the world. For airlines, it would offer an inexpensive way to navigate and to make landings when the weather is so bad it requires using the autopilot. The Stanford system puts two antennas on the plane, one to receive satellite signals from above, the second to receive positioning signals from the airport below. As it's flying in on final approach, we put a very low-powered transmitter, called an integrity beacon, underneath the approach path. The, the airplane picks up the signal, then uses the measurements from this transmitter and the GPS satellite to figure out where it is to a centimeter of accuracy. United Airlines and the Federal Aviation Administration helped the students test their system. It successfully made 110 touch-and-go landings without any need for a pilot to touch the controls. Using computer programs and a circuit board the students designed themselves, the Stanford system is so precise it could make it possible to land a plane in heavy fog at almost any airport. United officials say existing systems that allow autopilot landings and even the worst weather are extremely expensive and therefore used at only a handful of airports. Now we have what we call a category three landing capability at major airports, but this technology will be able to put category three capability everywhere. Stanford officials say their GPS system would be so cheap and accurate Relief workers could use it to set up a temporary landing strip in places such as Rwanda and make autopilot landings a simple matter in even the most remote location. The FAA is studying a handful of such GPS systems and plans to choose one to completely revamp the U.S. air traffic control system and the landing system at the nation's airports. The FAA hopes to have a GPS landing system in place nationwide within 10 years. United spokesman says, based on what he's seen of this system, that could be more like three to five years. Craig Heaps for CNN, San Francisco. AGO TV Channel 7, number one in Northern California. Now Don Sanchez, Cheryl Jennings, Lee Glasser Weather, and Dr. Dean Edel. This is Channel 7 News at 11.30. Stanford researchers have joined NASA in developing a new guidance system for commercial jetliners. And it is all in the name of safety. Channel 7's Paul Jeske joins us now live from San Francisco International Airport with more. Paul? Good morning, Sydney. I don't know if this is good news or bad news for white knuckle flyers, but I can definitely tell you after a demonstration here at SFO today that satellites up there are being used to land airplanes right down here. And the whole thing was designed and developed by graduate students at Stanford. Really? Now, we know it works because United Airlines has installed the system on a 737 and used it successfully on 110 trial landings. Now, here in a very simplified form is how it works. An onboard computer receives signals from four or more satellites that give longitude, latitude, and altitude. Transmitters at the airport refine those signals, and a computer on the plane puts them all together so the plane lands right on a runway target. How accurate is it? Well, just ask PhD candidate and developer Clark Cohen. The intrinsic accuracy of the system, in general, is on the order of a centimeter, which, which is a, around an inch or so. You can think of it as your uncertainty where the airplane is lies inside the volume of a baseball. So that's, that's how well you know your position coming in on final. And how well does the system work? Well, let me tell you. It did work 110 times. There was one incident in which the landing had to be taken over by the pilot, and that's because the Air Force pulled one of the satellites out of service for some sort of maintenance work. The pilot took over 
everything ended up just fine. So, you see technology working for us. You're going to be seeing this, apparently, in commercial aviation fairly soon because this exciting system really works very inexpensively, a good deal for everybody. All right, Paul Jeske, thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's a little disalarming to see the, nobody in the, the pilot seat, but of course I know a pilot would be there uh, normally. Uh, right, I like having those live guys yeah. in there. See, that's right. great. Okay. Good for the folks at Stanford. GOTV Channel 7, number one in Northern California. Now Richard Brown, Terrell and Joe, Pete Giddings Weather, Dr. Dini Dell, and Dan Lovett Sports. This is Channel 7 News at 6. Coming up next, a revolutionary way to uh, land airplanes. The latest in technology is aiding in a picture-perfect landing, and it's the brainchild of a couple of Stanford students. Finally this evening, some very smart and very talented Stanford students have come up with a revolutionary way to land airplanes. Channel 7's Paul Jeske reports they were working on a problem involving Einstein's theory of relativity when they discovered a system that may be more accurate than anything designed by aviation engineers. It's a sort of look ma, no hands approach to landing an airplane. And its inventors claim it can bring airliners down with pinpoint accuracy using satellites and a couple of inexpensive ground transmitters. Four or more global positioning satellites beam location and altitude information to the plane's onboard computer, where it's combined with signals fed from ground beacons. Time after time, the Stanford system brings the plane down on a dime. No, that's not how the bright brains that develop the system put it. The intrinsic accuracy of the system in general is on the order of a centimeter, which, which is a, around an inch or so. During 110 landings at a Central Valley test field, a specially equipped United 737 made 110 picture-perfect, completely automated landings using the Stanford system. Pilot Bill Levy was sort of along for the ride. If anything happens, we always take over. Of course, we didn't have to. While the computers and the technology seem to work just fine, pilots will still be around in the event of an equipment failure. And the fact of the matter is, there was one very unexpected emergency. The satellite turned off for a very brief period of time. It turned out when we checked with the Air Force that they were, they were doing maintenance on it for, for just that, that instant. The satellite approach is an estimated 10 times cheaper than ground-based systems, and both civilian and military aviation officials are anxious to get it operational. Paul Jeske, Channel 7 News. Geez, you know, Paul said it could be three to five years, maybe. That could be great, huh? Hey. KGO TV Channel 7, number one in Northern California. Now, Terrell and Joe, Richard Brown, Brian Hackney Weather, and Martin Wyatt Sports. This is Channel 7 News at 11. Stanford University and Uncle Sam have settled a $200 million overbilling dispute. Stanford had been accused of charging the federal government for such things as the upkeep of a yacht and billing it as research. Stanford has agreed to pay back more than a million dollars, and the government has dropped its claims of wrongdoing. Stanford researchers today displayed some high-tech testing that they hope will lead to many happy landings. A group of graduate students has devised a low-cost but precise aircraft navigation system. Using information from satellites and ground stations, it can guide a plane on automatic pilot to a landing within a few centimeters of its target. You're watching KNTV 11, the San Jose News Channel. Now, the most comprehensive news coverage for the Santa Clara Valley, KNTV News at 6. And while we're on the subject of traveling, traveling by air may soon be much safer, thanks to innovative technology developed by some Stanford graduate students. Six students have developed a navigational system that will likely revolutionize the way airplanes land. David Winter has the story. 110 successful stop-and-go landings on nearly the same spot every time. With the Integrity Beacon system in place, landing a 737 is as easy as the push of a button in nearly any weather condition. 
and all I've got to do is uh, essentially monitor it and put my gear and my flaps down for the landing. The new navigational system can pinpoint the location of a plane within two centimeters, about an inch. A group of Stanford graduate students tripped across the technology while trying to prove Einstein's theory of relativity in space. It wasn't long before we, it dawned on us that we could also apply this technology to landing airplanes. Clark Cohen and five other grad students worked with NASA Ames Research Center and United Airlines to develop the Integrity Beacon. The airplane flies overhead. It picks up the signals from these transmitters on the bottom GPS antenna right there. It picks up the signals from the satellites on an identical antenna that's on the top of the airplane. The computer in the airplane puts all that information together and does a lot of math. The new navigational system works with the plane's existing auto landing system. The pilot is simply along for the ride. This new technology will not only make things easier for the pilot up in the cockpit, but there are some real advantages for the people who will be sitting back here in the cabin, the passengers. We expect to be able to reduce air traffic delays, improve the capacity of airports so we can have a more efficient schedule, and reduce flight times from place to place. The system's accuracy, along with its small price tag, will allow flying into small airports, third world countries, and hospital helipads during conditions that would normally prohibit a landing. The students say they're thrilled their invention could soon help make the skies a little safer. At San Francisco International Airport, David Winter, KNTV News. And the system could be ready for implementation within the next five years. This is News Center 4 Nightbeat, your 24-hour news service. Good evening, everybody. I'm Pam Moore. The Federal Aviation Administration today praised a new kind of airplane landing system devised by a group of Stanford researchers. It means that soon we might be using satellites to land airliners. High-tech reporter Richard Hart takes us aboard a unique jet at San Francisco International Airport. Flaps 30, final setting. Satellites are revolutionizing the way ships and planes navigate. The Global Positioning System, or GPS, is rapidly replacing ground-based beacons to guide aircraft from city to city. But not for landings. The accuracy is not great enough. The satellite system actually puts out much greater accuracy, but commercial airliners aren't allowed to use it. Only military aircraft that have a secret code. The reason the Defense Department wants it that way is so that Saddam Hussein and others can't send a cruise missile in here using the more accurate data. Now a group of Stanford researchers has come up with a clever hack to get around those restrictions. The satellites are all broadcasting signals down. The satellites are 12,000 miles high in orbit, and the Air Force put them all up. Without our system, you can figure out where you are to within, to within about 100 meters, um, a size of a football field. If you use our trick, you can get to within a couple of centimeters. The trick is to place two transmitters, satellite impersonators, in the ground at the airport. Their location is compared with the real satellite's location in space by a computer on board the airplane to increase accuracy to within the size of a baseball. Captain Bill Levy sat at the controls for 110 fully automatic landings in a plane provided by United Airlines for tests in the Central Valley. No way, you know, who would have thought a satellite in the sky would be able to guide you down to a landing. The clincher is the transmitter costs less than $2,000. It runs on a camcorder battery, and the airplane satellite receiver is the size of a credit card. At San Francisco International Airport, Richard Hart, New Center 4, on the night beat. The Stanford team is competing with others working on satellite landing systems, too, but so far, theirs has been proved the most successful. The FAA won't choose one until next year.